All right, so welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. My name is Tarsha. This is Conversations with the Crawlers. We have conversations about faith, family, relationships, and we happen to do re recaps, reviews, and commentaries on some of our favorite shows. This one is all about the new season, the Dallas season the of Dallas season. Ready to Love. So if this is content that you enjoy, you know what to do by now. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like. Request notifications. And share. We'll see you in the comments. Consider becoming a member. And what? Check out that merch store. Buy. Buy something. Yeah. All right. So it seems like we just ended. I know. Married for, or ready to love like two weeks ago. Now we're back. We're back. So I'll just say I'm not overly impressed right now with the Dallas cast. Nothing against them personally. No, I think we see a little bit of drama happening with the ladies. You know, mm -hmm. they want to, you know, <laughs> I guess. Ladies ready to go to blows. Right. And what is going on? Gotta be classy. Oh, you stand, oh, you standing up? I'm gonna stand up too. Oh, let's be classy now. So, let's be classy. So we're not gonna run down every one of no, them because we're not gonna do it. I don't know. This season, it seems like there wasn't as much lead up as far as who exactly the trying cast to save was. that money is. We couldn't get any lead up. No commercials. Is this the last season of Ready to Love? Well, there's there's always gonna be a second season, second a part two of the the area. So there'll probably be a Dallas season again okay. after this one. But it's like even if you're when I went to the own website. Mm -hmm. The cast is still the cast from last season. Yeah, they were like, mm, somebody must have got cut. <gasps> it was during the writer's strike, right? Well, the writer's strike just started, what, a couple of weeks ago. So okay. this should have already been filmed and done before the okay. writer's strike. So this okay. this shouldn't impact that. Okay. I just think in, in Oprah, you know, Oprah whoever's didn't handling get your website, the they need <laughs> to go ahead and update that website. Somebody get the got cast cut. Up there somebody now. don't have a job. They were letting people go. <laughs> so, so... As far as like kind of the the high or the people that we kind of stood out for mm -hmm. us just from this first one, mm -hmm. um, you got Habibi who's a saxophonist and mm -hmm. he's thirty nine mm -hmm. or excuse me thirty three. Mm -hmm. He says his job is to put a smile on other people's faces. Mm -hmm. Now he's fit what four years in, in Dubai. Dubai. I want to go to Dubai. Yes, I do want to go to Dubai. We have a we have a, a goal to get to Dubai mm -hmm. sometime in the next few years. Yes. Maybe I need to learn how to play a saxophone. We we doing what we said, we doing a cruise for your fiftieth. Yeah, and then we doing Mexico or not in Mexico, Africa. We gotta go Africa. And then at some point after that, we'll hit Dubai. Yeah, that's gonna mother lane. But I'm just curious because he he acted like he's big deal over there. That's what he said. He says that they love him. I'm hoping he recorded something like you know he has music and that's the reason why he was over there. Because, like, was he in a musical group? Did he do nightclubs? I'm like, he didn't go into any. When people start, don't go, they don't go into depth. And he downplayed it, but yet he played it up. Because she was like, oh, my God, tell me more about Dubai. Everyone keeps talking about how they love it. He's like, if you leave it. I was like, what? So, so Dubai, so he basically, he's giving us the range. Either he was on Dubai Got Talent. Or he was on the street corner in Dubai <laughs> blowing his saxophone with a little suitcase trying to get money. We don't know which one. He don't have details yet. He didn't give us any details, but he was able to stay there for four years. So some way, somehow. So um someone else that sticks out is um who was it? Brandon. Mm -hmm. So Brandon is mm -hmm. a train dispatcher. Mm -hmm. Um he's been married two times. Mm -hmm. To the same person. Mm hmm The total 13 years together, 10 the first time, three, mm -hmm. and they have four children together. Yes. So I see a lot of women, they were really kind of judging him. You know, I think they should have gave, go a little bit more in depth, right? right? Ask him what happened. I think the first question I would have asked him if he would have told me that information is like, okay, so how's your mental health? Right. You know, what are you doing to help recover from, you know, your second time and then not working with Because did you wife? say he's only been divorced for six months? He's only been divorced for six months is what he stated. Mm -hmm. And I think in that time, you know, either you're still working on healing or you need to discover why your relationship didn't work with this person the right. second time around. 
Because I'm going to I'm going to give him credit. I knew you were going to do that. That was it <laughs> in my head too. The second time around. So so I'll give him credit for the fact that well, I don't know credit, but I'll I'll acknowledge the fact that they got divorced. Mm-hmm. And he it tried. Could, and he tried to reconcile. Yeah, second time. There, there was something there, right? Yeah, poor kids. Yeah, you gonna figure it's something better out. to it's better to stay together, save some money, stay together if you can. Because Brumman's paychecks are now de- being dispatched to, to <laughs> baby mama because or his ex wife. Okay, four That's kids. Four kids. This stuff add up. Listen. So, <laughs> so I mean, you have to put all that in perspective, right? And so I would give him the opportunity, like, hey, can you give me a little more background? Granted, you did try again, but mm-hmm. it didn't work out. Now you're six months strong and you're saying you're ready for love. You know, do you got it? Wait, how much baggage? Let me turn around. Let me see how much baggage you got behind you. Because I would want to know what work was done between the first time mm-hmm. and the second time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then... Since that did not work the second time, mm-hmm. what baggage or what things still need to be worked out mm-hmm. for you to be healthy and whole right. for now a third marriage, granted right. with only a second person, mm-hmm. but what is now going to work out for the sec- the, this ma- new marriage or new relationship? Because what what <clears throat> what three things you can say? What three things have you learned in your right. previous marriage? What what have you? Where have you grown in yourself by you know? trying to make your marriage work right all those things how is your relationship now with her is she looking for you like <laughs> like and and is there a third time in your future right who, that's who, the other that's question the other thing so granted would it be someone i would cautiously get to know mm-hmm. i would say yes but i just don't want to just dispose them saying hey you know, you got four kids and two times out. Yeah, I wouldn't do that to him. Yeah, because we saw, what was it? I think it was a Houston season that mm-hmm. somebody had like four kids or five kids and he was like 50-something. Yes, I remember him. He was a musician. Yes. Yes. Now, so so he's got... And he someone, had someone like three say, different women or something or two. That previous guy, yeah. Yeah. So someone said his baby mama ratio to kids ratio is kind of high. <laughs> It's a lot of dynamics. It's a lot going on with that. So, right? yeah. So, there's lots of... The thing that I don't like about the first episode of Ready to Love is that, one, they flash through the names so quickly, you don't have a chance mm-hmm. to know who they are. Mm-hmm. The second thing I don't particularly care for, and we'll get into it as we talk about who's going home, is the fact that somebody goes home the first night. I don't... I think they should, you know, wait. Because everyone, again, is trying to... Attempt to get to know so many people. Right. My understanding is that this, you know, they're there for a long period of time. I think you said about 10, 10 hours. 10 to 12 hours, yeah. You know, so, and you are trying to mingle as fast as you can, right? right. But you do want to have meaningful conversations as well. Right. So I wish, I wish they would, some of the things they brought to kind of spice up the season, like what they could have done is like put the golden ticket. And decide, you know, who is off the table. Right. Right? Like, they can't be voted off or whatever. Um, Change it that way, but at least give that first mixer, Mm -hmm. give them to the brunch or something. Yeah. Because it's it's 18 of them right now, which means that there are going to be at least two more people Mm -hmm. added, because typically they do 20. Right. So, we'll see. We'll see. So... When we start getting the conversations, um, Jessica is talking, and Jessica is a, uh, what is she? She's a 27-year-old she, coffee line yeah, owner. I don't know what that is. I mean, she could own her own brand of coffee. I, if she got players flowing down to Columbia picking coffee beans, cool. Hey. If she's got a white label company, uh, coffee line, mm-hmm. cool. Or if she has a coffee shop, cool. It's just, it's a little odd yeah. coffee line owner. I don't know what that means. So, but anyway, she's talking to Habibi, and she's like, "He ain't just a he ain't just got a red flag. He's a total red flag to her." Just or excuse me, Janelle, who a lot of the guys were checking for, mm-hmm. Janelle says that he's full of caca, mm-hmm. and I think you can figure out what that means. Um, 
Now, Habibi says the reason that he's single is because he keeps choosing music. And I think one of the young ladies asked him, like, so you put your relationship first? Mm -hmm. No, I want her to choose music. Okay. All right, dude. Bro. And then he's talking to another young lady, which they feel like they're vibing. I can't mm -hmm. remember which one. Was it Janelle? No, it wasn't I don't Janelle. know. They flashed her so quickly. And one of the ladies is still there right now. Oh, the one that was almost uh, like to Tequila. Tequila. Mm -hmm. That's who he was talking to. And um, he goes to kiss her hand, but he kisses his hand. And oh, you didn't kiss my hand. Oh, yeah, I didn't kiss your hand because I'm going to save that for next time. Listen, I was like, OK, that's a corny player move. I'm I, sorry. I was like, mm, I, don't, I don't understand. But yeah, hey, she she loved it. She was she was drinking it all in. OK, that's what she said. She was. So the other thing about the baby is that he does have a seven year old mm -hmm. um, and he says that he knew the, the mother of his child for 11 days. Yeah, I don't think I would have expressed it that way. I would just say, yeah, I got a seven-year-old son. Leave, leave it at it that. that. Now, as you go, like you said, as you get a couple of dates in, right. I want to go a little bit deeper. But it's just the way he expressed himself. It just kind of be off-putting. It's kind of off-putting. It comes off as I'm trying to be unique. So from his attire of wearing the, the culture from... Dubai wearing the, mm -hmm. the 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 headdress the headdress right yeah the headdress um it's like he's trying to stand position out. himself right he's trying to stand out he's trying to position himself as I'm that mysterious saxophonist who does stuff that you're gonna figure out what I do that's what he comes off as yeah and so I think the ladies are picking up on that. Um, now, Tequila and Philip do talk, and they talk about mm -hmm. sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, the way she positions it, and we talked about this when we were watching it. Yeah. So the way she positions it is almost like she's positioning from the fact that she's a believer, so she's concerned about how do you approach sex before marriage. But you don't ask somebody, where's the last place you have sex before? Or what's the, what's the weirdest place, or what's the strangest place, right? Right. I mean... I just I wouldn't ask that question. You no. could probably ask something else like, "Are you have you ever dated anyone who's been celibate? Like, right. are you willing to wait for the right person?" Right. I think those are all good questions because you don't start talking about you know what I like and don't like until you should be further along. Yeah. Period. Right. And then don't judge them when they give you an honest answer. True. So interesting. Yeah. Um, Quentin, who is 33, he's a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. He's talking with Lee, who is 34, and she's a health and wellness coach. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that they do have in common is that they both come from families with long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. So his parents were married for 44 years. Mm -hmm. Her parents were married for 30, 39 years. Mm -hmm. Now, she does say her mom got married when she was like 15. Right. She did say that. That's that's, that's old school that's South. Old South. That's, that's old school that's South. That's old school South. That's old school South. They both want, They he wants three kids, she wants two. They mm -hmm. said they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Two and a half kids sounds like two kids and a dog. It's what mm -hmm. they probably end up doing. Um, but now one thing about him is that he does point out that he has a tattoo that matches his ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that. I was like, would you do that? Would you tell Would you tell someone that you have your exes, y'all have matching tattoos? And it, it, see, because it's it's not like, again, it's not like he got her name tattooed across his cheek, mm -hmm. right? It's a heart-shaped <laughs> tattoo, right. look like on his finger or something like that, right. right? Right. So the thing with that is I wouldn't tell that until we get to like date three or four. And if you ask, right? Mm -hmm. That's a question that, you, that I answer when you ask me, oh, I see you got a lot of tattoos. What do they mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to volunteer that information on a first date situation. I'm just going to be like, oh, this tattoo mm -hmm. represents love, right? Mm -hmm. This tattoo represents my my faith. This tattoo represents whatever. You don't need to know that it matches my ex-girlfriend because I don't want that to be an issue mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, who else was it? So then um, there's Marier, mm -hmm. Marier, right? Mm -hmm. 
He's 39. He's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now, Lorianne, who was the, she's like 49 and she's a gym owner. Mm -hmm. um, Herbert, when they were talking earlier, Herbert was like, she she doing a lot of this stuff about the, the horoscopes. Is she a little crazy? Is she a little out there? But she's talking to Marier, mm -hmm. and who's 39 and, on, and an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And uh, she calls him vertically challenged. Right. And I'm like... Okay, you know, this thing about men being taller than you or anything, I think if you find somebody where you're compatible, I think a lot of times some some of that height thing can be overlooked. And and it's it's not as if at least when we're you know when I'm watching it it's not as if he's like four foot two no and there's a huge huge no. height difference if she take her heels off they may be about the same, same height he might be a, still an inch or two shorter okay um but the thing about Lorianne is that this is just my opinion I don't mean to be mean but her face looked very stiff mm -hmm. she looks like she's had some work. It's possible. Um, so it's like your your thing I don't particularly care for is downplaying somebody else when you haven't been satisfied with yourself. Mm, well, and you can't tell because that's when she was having a conversation and he was trying to express his feelings about losing his father. Yep. And she made kind of this odd face. And then he just he shut down immediately shut down. Because there was no humanity attached to it, There's right? There's no empathy. Right. Because right? if I tell you that I recently lost my parent, right? Right. That's serious. Even if I don't know you, I'm like, right. oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. How are you doing? Yeah. Because if you're mentioning, if you're bringing it up, it, it may still have an impact on you, right? Might be still really raw. And so he's like, I don't care. I don't know if this, this woman was raised by wolves or what. <laughs> so let me ask her. <laughs> Are your parents still alive? Maybe you don't have any empathy because you never had parents in your life. <laughs> she said that her dog died. <laughs> Maybe Bambi and, and Cujo raised you, and therefore you oh, have no gosh. idea of what it's like to lose a parent. I was like, but I'm like, in that moment, I don't care how you were feeling. You want to show some empathy. Like, yeah. show that you care a little bit. Just, Just again, enough to get through the conversation. I'm not asking you to cry with me. Right. I'm just saying I lost my parent. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. How are you doing? Right. Oh, that's that must be tough. How are you how are you handling that? How are that? you handling that? Are you okay? That's all that's all. Not actually you know you gotta be like, oh no. Um, so then on the other side of the the mansion or the house, whatever, Janelle, who a lot of the guys again were checking for, um, she's interested in Herbert mm -hmm. and the thing I pointed out is that, and that she points out, she's got her ring. She's got a ring on her wedding finger. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize it's twenty twenty three. I realize we got apps now. Mm -hmm. But if I'm if I'm a, and we we don't know if she's on apps. We don't know if she's using mm -hmm. you know the apps. What have you? I would assume so. But as a man, if I'm single, I'm looking at the ring finger, and if you got a ring fing, ring on your wedding finger, I'm not approaching. So that may be. Not the full reason. Well, yeah, but also she wasn't wearing a traditional wedding ring. So. Can, can, look, well, we don't know. I'm a man. I don't know what a traditional wedding ring looks okay. like. It's a ring. It's something on your wedding finger. I don't have. I'm not inspecting it. You are inspecting it. If you're inspecting it enough to say, oh, is this going to be the tell sign if she's married? If you have something that's not a traditional band or diamond, I'm not a man, but I would assume you'd be like, hey, I noticed you, but I just want to make sure. Are you married? Like, um, if listen, I'm interested. I'm telling you. I'm just saying. Brothers, help me out. Help let, him out listen, because let, let me know if you agree with me. Because again, I'm saying because there's as women man, that wear rings on their wedding finger. I'm not saying all of them. Some of them put them in the ring before or after. But or whatever. a man who is is looking and a man who has something about himself, in my opinion, is going to look at that ring finger. If there's something on that ring finger, I don't know because it could be an engagement ring, it could be a wedding band, it could be whatever. We don't know what it know. is. There's something on that ring finger 
to me, that symbol that symbolizes mm-hmm. that there's a commitment there, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So therefore, and granted, I, I'm 27 years out the game, mm-hmm. got it, right? But I'm just thinking how I would approach that. If I see a wedding, a, a wing, a ring on mm-hmm. the wedding finger, mm-hmm. I'm not approaching you. I'm not. I'm not going to hop to you because, to me, you're presenting something. Whether you're actually married or not, you're presenting something on that ring that tells me that you're in a commitment. That's true. I I hear you. I hear what you're saying. So that's just me. Y'all let us know what you think. Um, but now what was interesting about her conversation with Herbert is that it was like 12 in the afternoon when they started talking. Mm-hmm. And by the time they finished, it was, it was like 10 o'clock outside. at night. It was like you're <laughs> crickets and saw fireflies like, flying around. Uh, how long between the time that day it got it dark when and that talking. night, like, did things change? They was like, look, bring out these little soft boxes, bring out these lights, because we need to get some light on these folks. But that's dark good if they're having that connection, yeah. you know, that might. But it was funny. She 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 didn't mention it, him first. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's because the way they cut it right. or because if I'm having such a good conversation I would think he would have been the first one she should mention. Yeah. yeah. So Tommy comes back and he starts asking the guys, mm-hmm. okay, who y'all feeling, who you're not feeling. Mm-hmm. So Kyra, Janelle were kind of the top of the choice. Unique was also another name that was mm-hmm. mentioned a few times. Um, then he's like, okay, who y'all not feeling? And then mm-hmm. the names that they mentioned were Tequila. Uh, someone mentioned Unique. Mm-hmm. Sierra and Leanne were... Mm-hmm. The ones and for Leanne, it was like most of them were like it's just surface talk. She's just mm-hmm. talking surface, nothing deep. Mm-hmm. Um, so then Tequila and Leanne were the bottom two, mm-hmm. with Leanne being the one that they were like, "See you later, <laughs> deuces." Yeah, the gym on You're out of here. Yeah, she said she's gonna continue to look for love and work on herself. Yep, do that. <laughs> um, Tequila though was like, "I feel played," and. <laughs> And I don't, this is the thing because we've heard women say this in the past Mm -hmm. who were at the bottom and Mm -hmm. get to stay. Like every, I thought I connected with everyone. Well, obviously you didn't. Not in the way you thought. Not the way you thought. Mm -hmm. And also if someone just meets you, they're not going to be overly honest. True. Either. That's very true. So I don't think you should have felt played. Just everyone is just, you know, they have their representative. Mm-hmm. So, but my thing is, how are you going to take it in a way where you can say, okay, how can I grow? Yep. Hear what's going on and I can make a change, yep. right? Because what I didn't like is when I forgot the gentleman's name that was trying to console her. Maurier. Maurier, Maurier. was trying to console yeah. her. You know, because I don't know if he put her at the bottom too or not. I can't remember. I can't remember. But, you know, he was like, own your truth. If if you feel like blah blah blah, you doing what you're supposed to, you know, because she was kind of talking it, about. He was giving her some John Osteen quotes, quotes, <laughs> or Joel Osteen, whatever his name is. Joel you are Osteen beautiful. Yeah. Say after me, you, you are is, beautiful. You is good. <laughs> you is kind. <laughs> but I would, if I was truly trying to be her friend and console her. Mm-hmm. I, you know, first, I understand she's looking at all her past relationships right. and kind of some of the things that occur, right? So you can also be self-deprecating of yourself, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I don't think she should do that. And I think you should encourage her to like, hey, this is an opportunity to grow. Right. Hey, you know, when we interacted, this is the things I liked about you. Mm-hmm. And these are the things that I felt... Mm. I was eh about. Oh, who do you yeah, like, eh. I, was, I was trying to help you out. <laughs> Where I wasn't feeling you. Right. So I felt like that would have been more balanced to right. say, okay, because everybody learns something by meeting new people. Exactly. But to say, nah, girl, you good, you good. And then she could be on the chopping block again because someone said she was too aggressive. Right. Someone said she's she cut knives. So sometimes men want you to be a little softer. Yes. So these are facts. So yes, but she was crying. She was boohooing with She him. was. I, I get it. I feel you, girl. 
Um, then on the other side of the house, Brandon is talking with Lee. Mm-hmm. And again, that's where we find out, mm-hmm. as we mentioned before, he's been divorced six months ago. Mm-hmm. And she's like, mm, nah, I ain't, mm, that ain't for me. I'm not trying to get involved with that. And the way he said it, he was like, well, it was the third time. So I was like, really done. I just was able to just cut it off. So I'm like, okay, so here you are with the mother of your children. Right. And you had a child, four children with her. Right. And now because the second time around, you were able just to cut off any feelings you had about her. Okay. Again, you're not proving that you're a healed man. Right. You're showing. That's good. You're showing some wounds. Yeah. Because anyone who's been with anyone for a long period of time like, yeah, it could be some grief. It could be some regret. It could be all the things of things failing. Right. And the first thing that comes out is, yeah, I immediately could cut it off. I have no feelings about it. Because, mm-hmm. again, I mean, I, I think that when you're done, you're done, right? Mm-hmm. And so the question is, is that the first time he said he, they said they were done. And, again, these are questions that will probably never be answered. Mm-hmm. Not at we all. might get bits and pieces, but Mm -hmm. again, from his perspective, because it's like, okay, who initiated the divorce? I mean, these are, there's lots of, there's there's lots of things that for whoever is maybe pursuing a relationship with Brandon, these are questions that you're going to have to ask. And these are, these are questions that as relationship coaches, we would tell people to ask to find out who, who initiated the divorce? What was the cause of the divorce? What, Right. What were the 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 non negotiables that were crossed for you? Right, right. I think also I would talk to anyone who says, "Yeah, I've been. It's been six months, and I'm ready to get back in the game." I I would caution them in the point of, okay, let's do some self reflection. Right. Let's do some evaluation. Let's talk through that, and let's see if we might need to talk to someone. What are your unresolved personal issues because that has that's just come up because it's gonna come up again you want a long-term relationship right because it would be it would be different if he say he's been divorced for six months but they've been separated living apart for the last year and a half boom now you got two two years basically that you've been basically single Mm -hmm. i can get that but it really just depends upon how things have played out mm-hmm. and how things are working out. So there's a lot of questions that, that I would questions. recommend for someone to have for Brandon. I mean, I would even say, bro, you don't want to leave with this. But he's got to bring it out. He's get, I know. If, if I'm just meeting you and the conversation is just surface getting deeper, you know, I, have I you was, ever been married before? Yes, I've been married. I would just say, yes, I've been married before. And so you wouldn't had, necessarily say that you've been married twice to the same person. Not initially. Okay. I could at least say because it was the same person. <laughs> so you just counted it one time. I've been married. I've I, been married before. Period. I've been story. married before. Gotcha. I have four kids, and I would love to. And be And they're able. all about the same person. That's all you need to know at this point. You don't need to know that we've been married like six times. We just kept coming back to each other. As we get to know each other, I would love to go even deeper about yes. okay. what happened. In my past relationship, mm-hmm. and these are the these are the things that I still need to work on, mm-hmm. and these are the things I learned. Yeah. And then if they if we have a connection, right? Mm-hmm. In my in my second or third, you know, one of the things I learned because I was really fighting for my marriage. Right. Okay. I tried it twice, so we were actually married two times. Gotcha. But just to put it out there, like yeah. So I married her two two times. I got four kids. It, it's just the way you present. It's his, all in the presentation. It was an ugly box. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he had it in a Walmart bag and wow. opened it up. Not, not no. Uh, he had it in a Walmart bag. He said Walmart. That's a little. That's a little. That's a little step Is that up. Still high. So in Tulsa, it would be what warehouse market, <laughs> warehouse market, food city, y'all, food y'all city. know what your discount grocery stores uh, are in your shoppers area. in yeah. in our um, Maryland DC area, shoppers market, yeah, <laughs> food food line, whatever it might be, it'd be a Murray's. <laughs> wow. Uh, so then you got Unique, who is a TV producer, mm-hmm. film and TV TV producer. film producer. Um, she's sitting talking with Red, who is a DJ and comedian. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I feel I know you. I feel like I know you. And he's like, he's divorced. Mm-hmm. 
But then he's like, well, you know, they're talking. And she says he has a thought job. Yeah. And he's like, I'm kind of feeling you. But now you said that. Mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's not like he's doing anything in his job that I would consider that. He's a DJ. Right. You know, he's a comedian. So I'm I'm really confused by it. And sometimes I feel like when it comes to women, they feel like they can say things to men and that they won't be offended. I don't know. Or is it just that person's personality? So, yeah, because there there have been several times on Ready to Love and some of the other shows that we watch where folks have said stuff and it's like, you know what? I'm not going to react the way that maybe you would respond, Mm -hmm. but I am going to react with, you know what? Maybe you weren't what I thought you were. Mm-hmm. You know, because some things you we just naturally wouldn't say to a woman because you know it would offend them. That's right. what I'm trying to get at. So, because because a thought job, I'm I'm wondering what that means. I the fact that he, one. I mean, I know what she's trying to get at. Right. The fact that he's in, he's a comedian and he does DJ means that he's probably working late at night. He's in the clubs a lot. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't. That's what he does to put. Food on the table. That's what he does to stack his chips. That doesn't mean that he's just sleeping with everything that comes up and lays on, you know, right. presents themselves. And so that's why he said, I believe that's why he said he was offended. Yeah. So you're just saying, I'm just out there just sleeping with anybody. So, so, but hey, you can cross her off his list. He was yeah, just he's like, like, okay, mm-hmm. never mind. Uh, he's like, I was feeling you, but now, mm mm. He said, you just turned them totally off. After the love is gone. (laughs) Um, So Habibi is talking with Tequila, Mm -hmm. and he's like, baby girl, I was flabbergasted when your name was called. (laughs) He was like, he said flabbergasted. Hey, use your big words. Hey, but here's how you know that, you know, because Tequila was like, he thinks deeply. If that works for her, there's always at least one person on the earth for every person. One. One person. I, I'm not going to, I'm saying this, but I'm not saying this to offend. Don't offend nobody. I'm not, so I'm not saying it to offend, but somebody's deep is somebody else's shallow. It is. Right? For a that's toddler, true. That's, that's true. A three foot pool that's true. is a deep pool. It's true. For a six foot man, <laughs> three foot pool is very shallow. It's true. So she says he's deep. If that's her deepness, that's her deepness. Hey, you go do for you. It. Go for it. Um, so then Tommy comes back, and the names of the guys that the ladies are filling Quentin, Marvin, and Chris were calling probably like the three top names that were mentioned mm-hmm. as far as the ones that the ladies were filling. Mm-hmm. Um, on the downside, Red, Hab- Brandon, and Habibi were mm-hmm. mentioned with Janelle saying that Habibi is just, just there to entertain. Mm-hmm. So like he just here is comic relief. Mm-hmm. Um, so the bottom two ended up being Habibi and Brandon. Mm-hmm. And of course, it would not be ready to love without a what? A cliffhanger. Right. So that's who are at the bottom. Who, who do you think? think is- I'm thinking it's going to be Brandon. I'll, I'm, I'm I- agreeing with that. No one can see past the two two marriages to the same person and the four kids. If it's, if it's not this time, it would be the second time. Yeah. Because no one's feeling that right now. Yeah, I think I think Habibi might get an additional chance because he did get at least a vote from Tequila, it looks mm-hmm. like, probably. Um, I don't know that he's probably next on the chopping block unless one of the guys does something really dumb. Mm-hmm. But I think Brandon is the first one gone, and I think he even started crying. Yeah, he did. He's the, that's why I was like, bro. I feel like he you're did. still hurting. Sometimes this is not. I don't think this is the best place for a rebound love. No, not at all. I I just feel like you still. My thing is, why did you bring him on the show? Because 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 it's six months. Rebound love really happens in the course of. Date, 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 date mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. And then you find the person that you're really vibing with and mm-hmm. connecting with. And then that grows into something that now repl- now it grows and becomes a full relationship. Mm-hmm. 
this environment is not a replacement mm-hmm. or not a rebound type of environment. Not because yes, you are date, date, dating, but you're dating with the goal of within eight weeks, you know who you want to move forward with exactly. and establish a relationship with. Exactly. Don't work like that. That's not good. Don't work like that. That so. ain't good. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. I'm predicting, like you said, I think I Brandon think so. is probably going to go home first. That's my my opinion. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, but listen, y'all listen. make sure you lock in for this season. Lock it in. We here. We're going to give our relationship coach advice as mm-hmm. we move forward. Listen, and the other content that we have coming as far as just other relationship tips, the other shows that we're watching, you definitely want to be here for it. So make sure you're doing that by hitting that subscribe, hitting the like, requesting notifications. And and we will see you in the comments. Look, y'all have a great one. Be blessed. We'll see you next time. Bye.